Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. I hope you had a great weekend, ladies and gentlemen. I decided to take Sunday off. Of course, it was Mother's Day. So I'm going to play a little bit of catch up today and do our compilation news video today on Monday. And then we'll get back on track and do another one this Wednesday. Before we start, ladies and gentlemen, and I've got a bunch of news to go over with you. Let me remind you that this afternoon at 3 p.m. Alaska time, 7 p.m. Eastern Eastern time, I am going to be on with Gray from Gray Man Prepping on this channel this time around, so hope to see you there. Kansas Governor Laura Kelly vetoed a bill on Friday that aimed to prevent companies like China and other foreign adversaries from acquiring real property near military installations in the state. And that to me, ladies and gentlemen, just lets us know who is really on the side of the American people. Here is a United States governor of a state, in this case Kansas, who says, even though this nation and people of this nation have been caught doing things that are not good for the United States of America, America, we're going to go ahead and let them own land near U.S. military bases. It's not that we're not letting them own land, period, but near U.S. military bases. And in my humble opinion, I don't think that anyone who is not a legal resident of the United States of America or a citizen of the United States of America should be allowed to buy land here. It's our country and we should keep it that way. Under the bill, any foreign principal that owns or acquires any interest in real property in Kansas would be required to file a registration with the attorney general and divest of the property. What is wrong with that? Why does that have to be vetoed? I don't understand. And if you read on, there's going to be some quotes of the government saying something like, there are some things in here that may not be constitutional, but they never name what is that may be not constitutional. They just play with broad words. And now shifting over to the great state of California, Newsom forced to slash California budget blames crippling deficit on rain bombs and tax shortfalls. In the course of two years, California has turned a $100 billion surplus into a $73 billion deficit, forcing the governor to propose painful spending cuts on Friday while announcing his revised state budget. Do you really think, ladies and gentlemen, that it was due to rain bombs that they now have a deficit when they had a surplus of $100 billion? Let's read on and see what they say. And pretty much when he was asked why such a shortfall, first he said, well, it's not a 70 something million dollar or billion, excuse me, dollar shortfall. It's really more like 27, 30 billion. Uh, but uh, he also blamed the reduction in taxes from capital gains income, which in 2021 surged amid a raging stock market and plummeted in 2022. Then in 2023, the state continued to collect less tax revenue than projected. One of the reasons for that, in my opinion, is that people that actually pay taxes are moving out of the state. And he said that this is due to capital loss carryovers. He also blamed unexpected rain bombs, which caused the IRS to extend the tax filing deadline for most California taxpayers in 2023, following severe winter storms. When those taxes were eventually collected, they were 22% below the expectations, according to the governor's office. Now, ladies and gentlemen, off the top of your mind, do you really think that those reasons are really why they have such a shortfall when it comes to their budget? Do you think that maybe it has something to do with the conditions in which California now finds itself almost living like a third world nation, unless China is visiting, of course, and maybe the people that have all the money, the people that actually produce and make and build things are now saying, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to go on ahead and get out of here and go over to some greener pastures where they actually appreciate what I build instead of trying to destroy it by taking it all away. And this can probably be a video on its own. The WHO aims to monitor and control the global food supply. Imagine that, ladies and gentlemen, that the World Health Organization now wants to control what we all eat. On Wednesday, the first meeting of the WHO Alliance for Food Safety concluded. And here they state that a new plan for global governance just launched an alliance to control what you eat. The alliance will have the authority over what food is being produced how it will be produced, managed, and inspected, and where the food will be distributed. Bugs, anyone? 
This new plan uses the One Health approach. And here they say that One Health is designed to use fear to control us and justify the restrictions and the impoverishments and our demise. It is a cult based on fear of the world and the people who they say poisoned it. And it is baked into WHO's proposed amendments to the International Health Regulations and the P treaty ladies and gentlemen this is the same old story and why do i keep revisiting stories like this we need to continually be reminded of this so that we don't get taken like we have so many times people are waking up believe it or not and in the end of course as i've always stated good always wins over evil well, it definitely seems like we made it through the solar storms, although I believe that there's one or two still headed our way that are of pretty good size. And here it just states, are you prepared for that, ladies and gentlemen? Hopefully this weekend of all of these solar storms hitting the earth, you, number one, were able to enjoy the auroras. For us here, at least where I live, the auroras started a few miles south of us so we really weren't able to see it up here unless i just fell asleep too early that's probably what it is but number two you feel more relaxed in knowing how far we can go in that x range or that g range in solar storms to know that hey the world is not going to go dark i believe that our strongest solar storm this weekend was like an x5 or something like that which is pretty big all right correct me if i'm wrong in the description but we are still here the power line aren't burnt up our solar generators didn't blow up and we can now be confident next time this happens if it's an x5 or whatever it was the biggest one or lower that everything's going to be all right all right you can still take precautions but you'll know that the world's not going to come to an end and from earth.com they say that this was an extreme and very rare g5 level solar storm that hit us on saturday so i think it's a good thing that this happened because it teaches us especially those of us that are in the preparedness realm that a the world's not going to fall apart doesn't mean that you shouldn't stop preparing absolutely not but it means that you can relax a little bit and now you have some real life data that you can use towards your preps Another strong solar flare has been detected, which is a powerful X5.4 magnitude solar flare. It was detected from the sunspot 3664. And they finish it off by saying that solar storms of this intensity are very rare, but we're still here, ladies and gentlemen. That is such great news. Point of the matter here is, is that we got pretty high on the scale of solar storms. And although there were some interferences with radio waves, with some satellites, I even heard that some transformers caught on fire in some states, that there were some few power outages here and there in some other countries. But ladies and gentlemen, again, I think this was a great event that happened so that we can learn from it and know how to better prepare in the future for those of you that are new here if you're still here on this part of the video by the way you are awesome thank you very much for joining in today uh, the best thing that you can do to support this channel is to let the videos run all the way through and if you want to give up or donate really 15 to 30 seconds of your time go ahead and do it by letting an ad run up to like 30 seconds and that really helps as well so if you can press that little bell that lets you know when i put a video out it will let you know and again thank you very much for your support ladies and gentlemen and if you are new to the channel welcome it's really awesome to have new people come on remember that today we're going to have a live stream so join in on our live stream ladies and gentlemen they're a lot of fun not only does it keep you awake not only does it keep you from getting fidgety all right because i'm getting my brevet right now <laughs> but it can also keep you from aging i keep wondering why it is that people stop me in the streets and say man you're 52 years old you look so young and i'm and, and I tell them well no i'm not really 52 i'm 27 i've just had a really rough life anyways that was my dad joke of the day coffee is anti-aging linked to prevention of dementia that's a good thing and i'm going to try to pronounce this sarcopenia says study enjoying a cup of coffee can offer more than just a pick-me-up they say it's been shown to have numerous health benefits especially for older people research has found that the natural molecule in coffee trigonaline 
I think that's how you pronounce it, can help improve sarcopenia, which is an age-related muscle loss, and maintain muscles functioning during aging. And that's a great thing, ladies and gentlemen. And the reason I'm going over this article, first and foremost, is to alert you that, hey, coffee is not as bad for you as some people may say, but that coffee is only going to continue to go up in price. So if you like coffee or if you love coffee like I do, make sure you stock up on it. Follow the money, ladies and gentlemen. This thing that we're going through, this Green New Deal thing, is really, in my opinion, a transfer of wealth from those that produce something to those that sit behind a desk. Your tax dollars at work in two years, listen to this, $7.5 billion has produced just seven charging stations and I think 30 something actual parking lots. When people gripe about paying taxes and they say that government is the worst capital allocator that there is, this is why they say that. Because when government spends, ladies and gentlemen, they don't care about making profit. You see, when a business, when a private business spends a dollar, they have to know that that dollar they're spending is going to earn them a dollar plus back. Because if it earns them less than a dollar back, then they're losing money and they won't be able to stay in business long. The government is the exact opposite. The government, they don't care how much money you spend. They don't care if it's efficient or not. Why? Because they have a cash cow that keeps on printing. And anytime they need more, they either take it from the people or they get that printer going and they take it from there. Let's see, $7.5 in investments for electric vehicles has, in two years, ladies and gentlemen, produced seven charging stations across four states. The bipartisan infrastructure law signed by Biden in November of 2021 allocated $7.5 billion for EV charging. Of this amount, $5 billion went to states as a formula funding for the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program to establish a network of fast chargers along major highways. This is all a transfer of wealth, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of people getting very rich off of this, and it's definitely not the American people. Today, there's seven chargers with a total of 38 parking spots. That's what $7.5 billion has gotten us. McDonald's is finally admitting and throwing in the hat saying, man, consumers are broke. And these $19 Big Mac meals, they have got to stop. There's only so much that the people can do and can afford, ladies and gentlemen. And when a Big Mac meal that back in 2008, I think cost like five bucks, now costs like 18 or 19 bucks, people are just going to stop buying them. So now McDonald's could be relaunching the $5 combo meals, according to Bloomberg, citing a person familiar with the upcoming promotion. This could include a McChicken or a McDouble fries and a drink. Well, I guess we'll have to see what happens. I think that people ought to take that $5 if that's what happens and learn how to cook. With five bucks, you can cook yourself a very good meal. But that's another video for another day. Now, I think it's a good thing that this is happening to McDonald's and that people are waking up via McDonald's that inflation is completely out of control. And another one gets on the bandwagon. Nebraska ends income taxes on gold and silver. Declares CBDCs are not lawful money. Thank you very much, Nebraska. Hopefully, the other states will follow your lead. Nebraska has become the 12th state to end capital gains taxes on the sale of gold and silver. Not only that, I really like that they said CBDCs are out of here. This is going to be very interesting what happens with CBDCs because, as I've said before, I believe that the government is not going to be able to implement a CBDC for the people, that is, for everyday commerce. What's going to happen, in my opinion, and I explained this on one of my previous videos, is that the banks are going to consolidate after banks keep closing we're going to have a few big banks consolidate at the top they're going to implement cbdc's and then the government's going to control those banks but we'll have to see what happens i hope that i'm 100 wrong and i know ladies and gentlemen this seems like it's a little mini video within a video about gold why are we at the start of a new multi-year bull market in gold recently the dollar gold price aggressively broke a multi-year resistance level on the back of escalating wars worrying asset bubbles and sticky inflation long-term indicators show that gold is undervalued under these circumstances and can easily double in price over the coming years 
I believe personally, I'm not a financial advisor, that by the end of this year, gold is going to be at or pretty close to $3,000. I'm thinking personally between twenty eight and 2900 more human bird flu cases are likely. Remember that the fear mongering is starting. The fear mongering from the mainstream media will start and it will get more and more as the months go on until that big contest that we have sometime in November. So make sure to do your own research, ladies and gentlemen. Let's not have the same thing happen to us this time around that happened a couple of years ago, three years ago, or no, four years ago now. My goodness, how time flies. Let's not let that happen again. Let's do our research and let's know what's going on before we comply. And the last story that I am going to cover today, wages trail inflation in Argentina under Malay. Why are we talking about Argentina? Because ladies and gentlemen, there is a very good lesson to be taught here. Inflation, in my opinion, this is how I see inflation, especially in a country like Argentina that is trying to fix itself, right? Right now, the U.S. is not really trying to fix itself, all right? But there will be a day where inflation will be just as high, if not higher, than what Argentina is experiencing right now. And why is that inflation so high? Because Argentina is now in the process of paying for their past misdeeds. You see, right now, we're still adding and adding and adding deficit spending, adding more to our debt and adding more to our debt. Two trillion, two and a half, three trillion. The interest payments on our debt this year, I believe they said it's going to be like 1.6 trillion. We're still in the process of destroying ourselves. Well, once the piper has to be paid, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have super high inflation. And that super high inflation is going to be us repaying back what we took from the future. It is going to be us paying back that mortgage payment that we took on interest only payments. And that's what Argentina is going through right now. So looking and seeing at what's happening in Argentina is a good way for us to see what may be coming down the road for us here and in many other countries, I would say. Inflation outpaced salaries in March by 11% to 10.3%, according to a report by Argentina's National Institute of Statistics and Census, released Friday in Buenos Aires. In year-over-year -year terms, the wage index increased by 200% on average. Their wages increased by 200% on average, and it still couldn't keep up with inflation. 231.7% in the registered private sector, 183.7% in the public sector, and 129.2% in the informal private sector. And inflation was 287.9%, the survey showed. Hence, President Javier Millet's perception, or perception, excuse me, that salaries were recovering turned out inaccurate. Again, what I said in the past is that Argentina is now going through their really hard times, but if they continue down this path, things will eventually get better and they will recover and have a good economy. Why? Because they will be producing as much as they spend. And that's an equilibrium economy where inflation will be very low, if not non-existent, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you got something out of this. I know this one was a little bit longer. Man, there was just so many good things to talk about out there. I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, please give this video a like before you sign off. Again, we will see you this afternoon at 3 p.m. Alaska time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. God bless every one of you. God bless America. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out. Ladies and gentlemen, the sponsor of today's video is Jace Medical. Some of you may ask, but AP, don't you already work with a company that provides antibiotics? Yes, I do. And I've often said that competition is the best thing for the consumer, guaranteeing that you get the best product at the best price. And that's why I've decided to partner with Jace Medical because they offer different things at different prices. And you can see for yourself, for example, this month, they have the Jace Go Bag, which is a brand new travel size kit that you can take with you pretty much anywhere you go. And it has you covered for over 30 different illnesses. For example, motion sickness, diarrhea. I know it sounds nasty, but these things do happen. It's STIs, UTIs, ear infections, pneumonia, strep throat. Pretty much illnesses that can ruin your fun during a vacation or getaway, but can also be used to prevent illnesses from getting out of control and being life-threatening. 
And for the month of May, it is on sale for $129.95. In addition to that, I do have a code that would save you an additional $10 off the price at checkout. And guess what? Jace Medical is also available in Canada. And if you're looking for something more robust, the Jace case is their most popular item, which brings your standard antibiotics amongst other medications that you may need in the case that you couldn't make it to a health professional for whatever reason. And all of these medications, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that may not know, they are all prescription medications. And it's a prescription that's written by a doctor after you fill out a short survey, just to make sure that you're not allergic to any of these medications before a pharmacist, a real pharmacist, fills the prescription and gets it shipped out to you. Jace Medical has pretty much something for everyone, all the way from the base, from the Jace Go to the Max and Kid case. And here you can see that you have the availability to add on additional medications to your purchase that you may want to stock up on. And again, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to take advantage of their Jace Gold case, it is on sale for the month of May for $129.95 minus $10 if you use the coupon provided in the description. And I will also leave it on a pinned comment.